First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Fox 12 Now. I am Greg Nibbler. Appreciate you all joining us. Uh, we are live streaming, of course, on our website, on our apps, and on our social media channels. So lots of places for you to join us, join the conversations we get to have. And this is something that a lot of people are talking about right now, as usual, when seismic activity happens on Mount St. Helens. Uh, everybody gets a little concerned. Now, it's been since 2008 since I believe we had an actual real eruption, uh, but there are a lot of earthquakes, and according to one report, I believe 400 that have happened since um, about mid-July of this year, which seems like a lot. But what does that mean? What's happening with Mount St. Helens? Are we in danger of an eruption? I'm not saying we are, but that's why we have an expert that's joining us right now. We have Alex Yezzi, who is from a research geophysicist with USGS, Alex Yetzi, and uh, Alex, thank you very much for joining us. I know this is short notice uh, being here uh, uh, with us today and um, really appreciate your expertise. So I think to start off, you know, just, just to, for everybody to, to get an understanding, can you talk about your role with the USGS? Yeah, nice to meet you, Greg. I am a volcano geophysicist, as he mentioned. Uh, I focus on seismicity, so earthquakes that are happening beneath the volcanoes, um, as well as something called infrasound, which are sound waves that can be produced from volcanic eruptions or mass movement signals like uh, avalanches or landslides. Um, and I work at the Cascades Volcano Observatory, where we focus on volcanoes in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Um, which is also part of the larger observatories in the U.S., such as Hawaii, Alaska, and California and Yellowstone. That uh, sounds like a lot of fun, quite honestly. <laughs> is it, were, it, are volcanoes something you've stuff. always wanted to get into? Is this something you were always inter interested in? Yeah, I just remember when I was in middle school or something, and I saw some sheets of ice moving on a lake. Um, and I noticed that some of them went under and some of them went above. And I was like, this is this is plate tectonic. So this is a thing I was learning about in in middle school. And I'm not sure how the volcanoes came into it because I'm from Connecticut. Um, but I just got it in my head that I wanted to be a volcano seismologist. Um, well, you're in you're in the right area. And then in the yeah. <laughs> United States for volcanoes. Well, let's talk about Mount St. Helens. You know, I think uh, I, I believe I said it was the last major or last eruption, not major eruption um, night or 2008. Uh, when we last saw that. But with all of this seismic activity, can you talk about, you know, how frequent it is that we do see seismic activity on Ma Mount St. Helens and it, how does that compare to what's happened recently? Of course. Uh, Mount St. Helens always has seismic activity. Um, in general, for the past couple of years, it's been about 11 earthquakes per month. Um, but for the past couple of months, we've seen a slight increase in the number of earthquakes happening. So it's gone up to about 40 to 50 per month. Or, and um, so it's just a general increase. But between the 1980 eruption and the 2004 to 2008, this happened many times. Um, it's just the first time that it's happened since the end of the 2008 eruption. So with that um, time span, does that indicate anything that we are... Uh, closer to an eruption than we were before with this increase in, in seismic activity? Uh, the seismic activity we see right now is still consistent with what we what we would consider background. Um, so it's nothing alarming. It's not saying that we are, have an imminent eruption happening pretty soon. This happened three or four times between the 1980 and the 2004 to 2008 eruption. Um, it's just a slight departure than what we've been seeing. So we figured we'd uh, let people know about it. What would indicate or what would be the indicating factors that you look at to determine if something could be close to an eruption? Yeah, so seismicity is only one piece of what we look at when we're doing volcano monitoring. Um, so we have a lot of GPS sensors that can look at the deformation. So before an eruption, you might have a swelling of the volcano itself, um, which means that magma might be moving up. Um, we can also look at thermal anomalies, so maybe the edifice is getting a little bit hot as magma is getting towards the surface. Um, the other thing that we can look at is right now the earthquakes are a couple of kilometers deep um, below sea level. So right now they're pretty deep. Um, so if magma were to be moving closer to the surface, we would expect to see a trend in a lot more earthquakes, as well as them becoming a lot more shallow as the magma moved towards the surface. How does Mount St. Helens compare to other volcanoes along 
you know, the West Coast? Uh, volcanoes, I like to consider like a family. They all have their own personality. Some of them have deeper earthquakes that are happening on during uh, background activity. Mount St. Helens is one of the more seismically active, so earthquakes are quite normal for Mount St. Helens. Um, and other of them are, are quite uh, calm and quiet and don't have as many earthquakes as we see as Mount St. Helens. So it just kind of depends. Each one's, each one's a little bit different. Yeah, each one's a little bit different. And so you just have to learn their behavior to see what's considered normal and what might be uh, considered above normal. So with Mount St. Helens having more seismic activity than the other ones, uh, what are some of the other characteristics of the volcanoes you know, in this region, say around Mount St. Helens, with, with all the ones that we have around here? Are there ones that are more perhaps at risk? And I don't want to keep saying erupting because I'm not saying there's an imminent eruption, but are there ones that are more, more active than other ones? Yeah, Mount St. Helens is still what we would consider the most active volcano. It's probably the one that's most like to, likely to erupt in our lifetime. Um, and the other ones are a lot less active. Um, but for all the volcanoes in the Cascades, we would expect to see quite a few earthquakes and ground deformation because they haven't erupted in, in quite some time. Um, and so if magma was moving up, it would really have to break some of that rock. Um, so we would hopefully know for quite a long time before any of the volcanoes in the Cascades became um, somewhere close to an eruption. I'm taking a look here at a couple of the uh, charts that you had to just showing some of that seismic uh, seismicity. Mm -hmm. Uh, there in between, if, I, if I'm saying that correctly, um, <laughs> between between these different areas. Can you tell us what we're looking at here with this chart? Yeah, so the top plot is showing the what we would consider background seismicity or inter-eruption seismicity um, from the end of that 1980 to 86 eruption up until when the 2004 eruption started. And the bottom panel is showing from the end of the 2008 eruption to now. Um, and so the top panel uh, for both of these time periods are showing the events per week. And so this is just kind of telling you how many earthquakes we were able to locate um, as a function of time. And then directly below that, it's showing you where below the edifice, so where below the volcano, these earthquakes are occurring. Um, and you can see there's some a few faint red boxes on the top plot. Um, which are showing where we have these earthquakes happening at about zero uh, kilometers below sea level, um, going down to like eight kilometers below sea level. And that is very similar to the very bottom right panel, which is showing these earthquakes over the last couple of months. Um, so we see them roughly in the same depth range um, and the same characteristics as we saw, especially between that 1986 to 2004 period on the top panel. And, but you don't think that that's indicative that we are going to have an eruption soon? Uh, it's not, not anytime soon. Um, this is still considered background. Uh, we would expect to see a lot more activity, both seismically, uh, geodetically, um, before we would say anything about eruptions. Um, the other thing that we can look at is gas composition. So we have a gas sensor at the summit of Mount St. Helens and the ratio of types of gases can tell us how close to the surface magma is. And we don't see any anomalous gas activity either right now. That is so much data that you are gathering on that. How many different kinds of sensors do you have up there on the mountain? If that's even a question you can answer. Yeah, there's, I think, 27 seismometers within 20 kilometers. Uh, we have a few infrasound arrays, so looking at sound waves um, in case we have any eruptions or debris flows or, or avalanches, we can usually see those with that. A couple of gas sensors. We have the GPS, so we looking at whether or not the volcano is swelling. Um, yeah, so there's at least six types of instrumentation and a lot of each of those types. With all of this data that you're able to gather and interpret, how long of a notice do you think you would have before you would, before an eruption would occur? Um, we, well, we would hope to have a couple of months worth of data um, in order to know for sure, but we definitely have um, a lot more time than what we're seeing right now. How how much is that um, that the technology behind this constantly changing? you know, giving you more information. What's, uh, I guess, how, how often does it, with the technology changes, does this change the way that you're able to interpret all of this data? 
Oh, it's it's a constant battle. Um, every time we think we have the next best technology, they're already making the new thing. Uh, so before the 1980 eruption, how, for example, um, you could only detect certain frequencies, so certain vibrations of the Earth. Um, but now we have what's called broadband seismometers, so we can look at a whole variety of ranges of frequency content. And then infrasound is also new, so there's just always new technologies and new advancements in the instruments. So every few years, we're, we're always switching out instruments to get the next best thing. Well, Alex, uh, anything else that you think people should know uh, about what's going on on Mount St. Helens? Uh, nothing for now. Uh, this is still considered background activity, but we always have our social media pages for the USGS, um, and we'll put out information statements as, as anything changes. Which I definitely follow. They're, they're fascinating. I love learning about this stuff. So I really appreciate you joining us uh, to, to share the knowledge here. I'm sure you've got a lot of media inquiries today with, the, with this going on. And I appreciate yeah. you having some time to be here on Fox 12 Now. Like, thank you so much, Alex. Absolutely, thank you for having us. Um, I love those discussions, getting to, to find out about that and, uh, and learning more about that. So for everybody watching, hopefully we all learned a little bit more. Uh, don't worry about an eruption is basically what we got out of that. Uh, but still really interesting to know and, 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 um, you know, and to have them out there monitoring this and getting, gathering all that data. Uh, it's so, especially, I mean, we live here in the Northwest. We're in a land of volcanoes, so it's always cool to learn more about it. Uh, we do cover a lot of topics here on Fox 12 now, so we've got a little bit more news for you here that's going to be coming up. We're going to take a quick break. If you're watching on social media, uh, you'll see the stream end. You can hop on over to our website and apps and join there and, uh, and watch along here for a few more things that we have for the rest of the day. Uh, but don't forget, you can always share our, our show, share the stories. If you are on Facebook or YouTube, uh, just go to the Fox 12 now tab there, and then you can... Uh, you can share that, our live tab rather on, on YouTube, and you can share all these shows and segments that we get to have like this one talking about Mount St. Helens with Alex from the USGS. All right, um, again, social media, I'll talk to you later. Head on over to the website and apps. I'll talk to you in just a minute. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.